Assalamu alaikum students, welcome to the pharmaceutical quality management theory classes. Today we are going to discuss the, the chapter of quality control of parenteral. These are the contents of this chapter including Likers test, Clarity test, Pyrogen test for parenterals and the other sterile products sterility test and assay for active ingredients. These are the objectives of uh, today's lecture. You will be able uh, to know about liquor test for the parenterals and the different tests conducted at the each state and how you are going to enlist the all quality control tests that are performed for parenteral preparations. So the journal areas of the quality control for the parenteral preparations include incoming stock, manufacturing or the processing and the finished product. So the incoming uh, stock uh, control area, the first control area which apply various tests uh, on uh, raw material as well as the packaging material. First of all, uh, the routine test on the ingredients means whatever the uh, raw material as well as the excipients that are going to be incorporated into the particular parenteral product. They are tested for their purity as well as the quality and for the presence of any type of contaminant which can be, uh, which can interfere with the product efficiency and the safety. So, various physical, chemical, biological and instrumental analysis tests are applied for this purpose. Second, uh, pyrogen test on water for injection. So, water for injection is the one of the common vehicle that is used for the parental preparation uh, and it must be free from all type of the microbial toxins uh, like uh, especially pyrogens that can affect patient health. Uh, therefore, it is continuously tested uh, for the presence of uh, these toxins. Uh, so, the vehicle must be uh, free from all type of the uh, microbial toxins especially the pyrogen one <clears throat> third uh, the glass test on the containers uh, so the ampules the wires bottles used as a primary packaging material which come directly into the contact with the product therefore they must be of high quality so usually type 1 glass is preferred for the parental product uh, that have the least uh, chances of leaching out its uh, content into the container product uh, which can lead to the any uh, sort of contamination of product which may affect the safety of the uh, product. So, uh, the all the containers, ampules, oils or the bottle that are ordered, they are checked for uh, the quality and for its uh, confirmation of its glass composition. And for this purpose, uh, uh, test performed is called as alkalinity test. Uh, much detail will be available in the second semester course. So, uh, the alkalinity test we will be discussing uh, uh, afterwards when we have the second semester course. Uh, next is the identity test on the rubber closure. So, the uh, vials and the bottles, they require uh, rubber closure for their sealing, their uh, protection because they are termed as multi-dose containers. So, they require a closure that provide uh, proper protection and efficient protection for storage of multi-dose as well as removal of the multi-doses. <clears throat> Therefore, uh, rubber closures are being applied. So, they must be efficient one. Their identity is performed by using uh, IR spectroscopy. Uh, next one is the plastic test on the uh, plastic container. So, similarly, uh, glass containers are mostly preferred, but sometimes plastic containers are also used for the parental preparation. So, those uh, uh, companies that are incorporating plastic containers, they must perform the plastic test on their uh, plastic containers. So, for this purpose, again, infrared spectroscopy is preferred for their identity 
and the quality check. Uh, next one is the microbial uh, load test uh, or we can say in other words bio burden test to find out type and the number of microorganism into the raw material or into the packaging material before they are processed into the manufacturing process. So uh, as parental preparation need to be sterilized one so uh, before moving into the proper sections proper uh, proper processing of sterilization they are initially tested to check the level of the microbial contamination that is already available so uh, necessary precautions should be taken uh, at the actual sterilization stage to prevent any type of uh, inter uh, intervention or any interference into the product that may lead to uh, affect the product efficacy or safety second control area for the parental preparation the manufacturing or processing area so uh, the tests that are applied include conductivity measurement during distillation of water for injection the vehicle that is being applied uh, that is the trial virogen free as well as the distill and deionized water so the ionic level along with the impurities and the microbial contamination is also controlled and there is a continuous monitoring of the conductivity is also maintained to assure uh, the pH and the tonicity of the uh, vehicle that is being in, uh, incorporated into the parental preparation. Uh, second test that is being performed is the confirmation of fill volume in the container. So, so containers include the ampules, the vials, the bottles. Uh, they have certain capacity to hold uh, the final product. So the fill volume uh, is also continuously checked to uh, maintain the quality as well as the quantity of product that is being supplied to prevent any sort of subtherapeutic or any toxic effect to the patient because fill volume has some sort of direct connection with the uh, amount of the active constituent that is present in certain ampule, vial or container. Therefore, this test is also applied during manufacturing process to confirm uh, the container's capacity of holding uh, the product. Next test is the time and the temperature of thermal sterilization. So one of the important step in the preparation of the uh, parental product is the sterilization. And if the product is uh, uh, thermostable, usually thermal sterilization is being performed either through oven or uh, through the autoclave. So their time and temperature are very crucial because uh, their sterilization process also depend upon the time and the temperature as well as the product, the active uh, can also be affected by this procedure uh, and the components like time and the temperature because temperature and the time can affect the active, it may cause any denaturation or uh, inactivity in the active one therefore a continuous check on the time and the temperature of thermal sterilization is also very critical uh, test or step that is being uh, monitored during the manufacturing process to maintain the quality or to control the quality of product that is being supplied. Uh, next test performed during the manufacturing or the uh, processing session is the leveling of the container. So after filling, sealing, uh, all the uh, containers are being labeled holding the important information with regard to the content and the active one. So they must be uh, labeled properly as well as correctly. So the checking whether the label is applied correctly and the label, correct label is being applied on the product one. So this uh, is also one of the tests that is being uh, applied during manufacturing process uh, to uh, assure the quality of the parietal product. 
so the third control area finished product area so the finished product quality control test include liquor test clarity or particulate evaluation test sterility test pyrogen test uniformity of content and chemical or biological test for checking the purity potency uh, of the product we are going to discuss leaker test that is one of the test that is applied for uh, finished products uh, for the parental preparation this test is, is specifically applied for ampules because that have been sealed by fusion or heat sealing method so they must be subjected to a test to determine whether or not a passage way remains to the outside so uh, it's important that when we are having a container that is a unit container that is sealed by the fusion or heat uh, it's important to know if the sealing was proper or not because uh, we that may affect the safety of the product so it says ki fall or a part of content may leak to the outside and spoil the package or microorganism or other contaminants may enter means if there is any crack any hole or any passage is available so there are the chances that the product may leak outside so if the product is the leaking outside the container so the volume or the amount of the product will not remain as the label claim and that will be not providing the accurate dose as per required second it can spoil the package so whatever the secondary paper package that is being applied uh, for their further protection that can be affected that that's its rigidity will be affected third microorganism or other contaminants may enter so the there are chances that there is a passage the the microorganisms or any sort of the environmental contaminants may enter into the product and the product may lose its sterility and its safety therefore the test perform to confirm that there is no any sort of passage or crack or hole is available uh, that can damage the product as well as that can uh, be source of uh, uh, damage to the patient as well so there are two methods are applied for detection of a leaker in an ampule uh, one is vacuum chamber method another is autoclave method this method vacuum chamber method as the name suggests chamber and vacuum means this method involve a chamber in which vacuum is created how this method is performed it says this test is usually performed by producing a negative pressure or in other words we call reduced pressure or vacuum within an incompletely sealed ampule while the ampule is submerged entirely in a deeply colored dye solution means in the chamber there is a dye and over there the ampules are being completely submerged completely dipped into the dye solution in the chamber and then vacuum is applied to check uh, the leakers so the dye that the chamber holds is uh, actually approximately 0.5 to 1% methylene blue solution 
so the dye that is being applied for this method for checking the leaker uh, detection uh, 0.5 to 1 percent methylene blue solution is employed and a vacuum of 23 inches or more mercury but less than 32 inches of mercury uh, is applied for 30 minutes. So in that chamber in the dye solution the vacuum is created plus those ampules are completely submerged in the dye solution under vacuum for at least 30 minutes. So after this due time the ampules are taken out, washed, rinsed with water externally to clear of all the dye material and dry. After carefully rinsing the dye solution from the outside, color from the dye will be visible within a leaker. Means after rinsing, removing all the dye material, clearing of all the dye material, the ampules are visually checked for the presence of color from the dye. So if there is any sort of pinhole, any sort of crack is available, the dye will be more visible over there. And if there is complete passage away, the, then there are chances that the under vacuum, the dye will be entered into the ampule and can contaminate the ampule uh, contents. So it will be more clear if there is any sort of dye solution or any colored material is available in the ampule. It means the dye has entered into the uh, ampule because it was not sealed properly during uh, sealing process. Picture is showing you few ampules are there with the colorless clear contained whereas few are there with the darkened contained. Now this picture is showing you the result after these all five ampules tested for the uh, liquor test in a vacuum chamber method uh, having a dye solution. So uh, originally the product is a clear one so these three ampules are showing you that there is a no any entry of any sort of dye material because they are properly uh, sealed one there is no passageway there is no any crack or hole available that can uh, have a channel for the dye to enter into the container and contaminate the contents whereas these two you can see the contents become darkened in color as a result of a methylene blue solution which was placed into the chamber. It means they both are leakers. They were not sealed properly. They had hole or any sort of crack or passage that caused the dye solution to enter from outside into the ampule and uh, in the result they are contaminating the product that was actually colorless. So this is very helpful in detecting the leaker or incompletely sealed ampule when the dye has an entry over into the product. So now it can be more clear to you people that when the improperly sealed container is going into this test what happens and when properly sealed container is subjected to this test then uh, there is no any change or effect is happened over there. Second method of leaker detection is autoclaving which provides you a dual purpose that it is going to perform the sterilization procedure along with the leaker detection. So whatever the ampules that are being sterilized, terminally sterilized after sealing, uh, they can also be having uh, a detection of leaker if it is uh, available. So this 
uh, method can also involve the incorporation of a dye in the water uh, that is placed for the steam generation in the autoclave which will further help in the leaker detection. Similarly, the result will be almost similar uh, as that was achieved by using the uh, vacuum chamber uh, method. Uh, more clear results will be available. Uh, so this is one of the option. Uh, similarly, uh, as the autoclaving sterilization is only performed for the thermostable preparations, so for leaker detection, uh, again this method is limited to uh, to the thermostable preparation. It's only performed for thermostable preparation. For the thermolabile one, uh, vacuum chamber method is preferred as compared to autoclave method for uh, clear proper results so upon the discussion it's important that earlier uh, we have discussed that the full ceiling provide you more efficient ceiling as compared to tip ceiling so there are chances of holes and the cracks are more when ampules are being sealed by tip ceiling as compared to when they are full sealed so more leakers will be detected if the tip sealing was performed for the fusion or the sealing of the ampules as compared to full sealing. So boils and the bottles are not subjected to the autoclaving or vacuum for leaker test. So leaker test is basically not applied for the bottles or the boils. Because they are having the caps, they are not sealed for uh, by the fusion or any heat sealing method. Therefore, uh, the leaker test is not performed for the vials or the bottle. Instead, they are being tested for sealing efficiency of the rubber cloyer. So, vials and the bottles are uh, also termed as multi-dose containers. So, uh, they are not being sealed by the heat sealing method. To, they are being sealed by the rubber closures by the crimping aluminium caps uh, that provide the multiple injections or multiple dose removals. Therefore, whatever the rubber closure is there, its quality and efficiency is important in the case of vials and the bottles or in the other words, multi-dose containers. So, uh, the test that is being performed by uh, the, as the step is showing you, air by means of syringe is injected into the vial and that vial or bottle is completely submerged into the water. So, again there is a container, clear glass container is taken and uh, into which clear water is placed, then in the sample of oils or the bottles, air is taken into the syringe and that is injected. And after injecting the air, that oil or the bottle is completely submerged into the water. Now, as a result, if it says as air ejecting in the form of a bubble shows an incompletely sealed oil or bottle means if your rubber closure is not providing you the efficient sealing and that is not providing you the multiple dose removal or multiple injections and there is the passage or the hole remained after the injection or the fitting of the rubber closure is not proper one on the vial or the bottle there are then whatever the air sample you have injected into the vial that will eject out from that passage in the form of bubbles because it was dipped into the water so in the water when air comes it will be forming bubbles so formation of the bubble will show you that your vial or your, your bottle is not sealed properly or your rubber closure is not of that quality or efficiency that is required for your product. So these are the reference material for today's lecture.
so that's all from my side for today thank you uh, if you have any queries or question we will discuss in our zoom meetings